Well, we're back to reviewing another Pure Flix movie, and the plot of this one is that it's, uh, it's a biopic on Rachel Joy Scott, who was the first kid killed in the Columbine Massacre in 1999. Thanks for not making this one easy on me, guys! The moment the trailer went up for I'm Not Ashamed, loads of criticism was heaped upon the film for seemingly using tragedy as a way to promote a Christian agenda and the possibility of it saying that the whole incident was because of religious persecution. With that being said, it's still a movie about a 17-year-old girl who was shot and killed. It's pretty important to go at a movie like this from a slightly more analytical angle, as opposed to just snarking all the way through it. Hey, Snub, I have some thoughts about the Columbine incident. <laughs> now, Snobby! If you know anything about this story, right away it's easy to see what angle this movie is going to use towards the shooting. Supposedly, in her final moments, Rachel Joy Scott was asked by shooter Eric Harris whether she believed in God, and when she said yes, he responded with, well, go be with him, before killing her. It's a big debate about whether or not that conversation actually happened, or at the least in that context, but with it being such a hot-button case, you can pretty much find any website or story that'll go along with whatever it is you believe. Hell, if you want to believe that the conversation happened because of a similar line in Death Wish 2, you could probably find a site that supports that. The movie wasn't without other controversy as well, when YouTube blocked the movie's trailer for 11 months with no explanation. The producers of the film claimed it was because of YouTube showing anti-religious bias. Okay, slow the fuck down, Persecute Ted. As someone who has had videos taken down without much explanation, I don't think it's because YouTube has a bias against people with glasses. The Bible Reloaded guys have gone through hell and back over videos being taken down, and I guarantee it's not because people think they're too Christian. Point is, it happens! One thing is for sure, I'm not used to seeing a logo such as Universal Studios in front of a Pure Flix film. Or some of these other studios. Alright, I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories, but I don't think that robots were behind the Columbine Massacre. It's also from Visible Pictures, so good or bad, at least we'll be able to see the film. The movie opens with actual news footage of the incident, which isn't unusual for a film based on a tragedy. According to reports, two gunmen came in shooting and began working their way through the school. What police and everyone else are looking for now is a reason. This movie's not going to give much of a reason. We see Rachel right away as someone who takes to being an artist, and how her parents' divorce is affecting their family at a young age, especially her older sister. Unbelievable. This is so lame. <laughs> yeah, it's the 90s. Angsty as fuck. The family uses prayer to get them through their days and their troubles, which I guess worked because in the next scene they're on a shopping spree. Though they may be over-montaging here, because it immediately jumps right into the future. A lot of it also has to do with Rachel being an aspiring actress. She's upset that she didn't get a part in the school play. She's immediately portrayed as a normal kid, such as when she wants to work on getting boys to notice her. Perfect time period, too. She's All That was extremely popular back then. Rawr. Totally. As well as ending a scene with totally... Actually, that's kind of a timeless line. While portraying her a bit angelic at times, it doesn't show her as so perfect that she doesn't do normal teenage girl things. She sneaks out to hang out with her friends and some guys at a swimming pool, and unlike a lot of modern teen films, this one has no problem showing that teenagers do smoke and they do drink, and unlike a lot of Pure Flix movies, this film isn't judging them for that. Although they may be judging PBR a bit, as they don't do a very good job at hiding the labels. 
I'm just glad Clay Walsh isn't here to tell them that they're all going to hell. But I want the guy, I want to want what I am and not the fake version of what I think I want to think that they want to think that I am. Yeah. You're like, deep. <laughs> well, I didn't say the dialogue was, like, perfect. It is the 90s, so the scene does end with them swimming in a giant pool of Zima. I also didn't say that there would be zero jokes in this review. She is busted big time by her mom, and I never thought an opening scene in this film would look like something out of an early scene from Boogie Nights. You smell like smoke. And booze. Are you buzzing? Again, dialogue isn't quite on the Boogie Nights level, but it is better than lines like this. You're just feeling sorry for yourself. No, I'm missing all the fun. No, you're missing all the sin. She goes off to her cousin's farm, and judging from the first still frame of her there, she wants to be anywhere else. Her cousin is dressed in a way that makes me think it's a spirit talking to her. She's going through a bit of a crisis of faith due to her home life and her school life, which her cousin helps her with. I know it sounds crazy and it's really hard to explain, but it's about truly living a life for Jesus. And when you do that, you'll have this sense of peace. Yeah, your delivery's a bit flat there. Maybe that's what that robot was all about. So we need to amp that up with montages and Christian rock. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that's not that band singing. The good news is your faith is stronger. The bad news is your wallet is now soaked. The school year begins, and the 90s made it much easier to notice the douchebags. They all wore the same white hats, and they all look 30. Oh, uh, dude, Shep's parents are going all semester, so we're gonna have mad ragers like every weekend. You guys gotta come. Oh, we'll be there. Love Snow One. <laughs> Yeah, what's death? Spoken in a way that makes me think Steve Buscemi was first offered this role. See you around. See what I mean? Guys don't even see me. Hey. Um, I don't think that dude not seeing you is a bad thing. We see the shooters, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, right away as Harris is bowled down the hallway, which gives new meaning to bowling for Columbine. <laughs> I'll kill you, Riggs. Oh, so scared. Okay, we know where this movie is going. Even if something like that was actually said, you can tone it down on the foreshadowing. This movie isn't going to tone it down on the foreshadowing. Seriously, look at how his face lights up when Hitler is mentioned. Hitler thought natural selection should be actively aided. He's smiling because that was during art class. What the fuck? Ah, uh, one thing I miss about high schools back then, the designated smoking areas. They replaced the mid-90s designated heroin areas. Rachel is so into her artwork, she works on it in other classes. Very nice, Miss Scott. But this is an art class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can kind of tell by the questionable Shakespeare painting in the background. Rachel attends a party with a lot of drinking and possibly a lot of sex, and she completely does the right thing by simply telling her friends to be careful. I never thought I'd say this sentence, but this Pure Flix movie has more smoking in it than Reservoir Dogs. The Scott family now has a stepdad, and I would like to know more about that, but the scene keeps getting interrupted by an annoying kid with a guitar. I just got home from work. I don't want to have to think about anything. Hey, honey. Hi, honey. Are you tired from filing debit and credit reports and punching the calculator? I would rather have Bluto show up than listen to some more of this dialogue, which, again, is a little too on the nose. Come on, Larry, please. Uh, the car needs a new catalytic converter and foreign parts are expensive. You can even teach me how to drive my car. Look, it's my car and I said no. He said no, Rachel. For now. Sometimes I honestly forget that this is centered around the Columbine shooting until something like this bizarre editing happens. I'm
I'm not sure if Harris reading Mein Kampf is the place for inspirational music. A big subplot has to do with Rachel's friendship with a homeless man named Nate, who she first meets by following him from her prayer group and stops him from shoplifting by buying food for him and his family. Why is one of the only Pure Flix movies that's actually about people practicing Christianity the fucking Columbine movie? And why does it need to feature lines like this? Yo, look at these fart knockers. <laughs> What's up, four eyes? Fart knocker? It's a movie about bullying and mass shooting. You can drop the fart knocker and just have them say cocksucker or motherfucker. I mentioned earlier that when it comes to your own feelings about this story, it's easy to find an opinion or website that goes along with your own, and that can be said for why this incident happened in the first place. Whether you want to entirely set the blame purely on bullying, mental health, depression, or music, the goths, antidepressants, you'll find no shortage of other people who also feel the same way. So what do you think this movie is gonna go with? If only this was Columbine. Bam! Yeah, maybe it could be. Um, Pure Flix once released a movie that called for a militaristic call to arms to take over Washington, which ended in the movie's logo featuring crosshairs. Let's not be pretending you have a moral high ground over video games. Rachel, meanwhile, is still trying to get Nate to come to her prayer group by any means necessary. I'll go play in traffic if you don't. What would she have done if he still didn't go inside? Would this have turned into Bowfinger? Eventually, Nate does go to the group, but with this guy in the background, it's giving an unfortunate one of us vibe. That's still better than any time the movie cuts to this. Ride the bus, Eric. I'm not gonna ride the bus with those idiots. Look, man, I'm not your personal taxi service. If you're not here in five minutes, you're dead. I know where you sleep. I get it. He's gonna kill a lot of people. Rachel's trying hard throughout the movie to get a lead in the school play. And I hope it has better dialogue than the movie. Well, I figure if we practice in here, then when you audition, it won't be such a big deal. You'll be comfortable with the space. Good idea. Even though all the world's my stage. Huh. So there's this movie coming out. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Jesus Bro or something like that. It features a scene where some characters are on a stage and Santa Christ asks, Isn't the whole world a stage? That was written before this movie was even released. It unintentionally parodies things not even seen or heard about yet. Parodying pure flicks is like divine intervention. Look, kids, I'm just not sure that the miracle worker needs a dance number. She and her friend Alex begin bonding big time, and whatever you do, do not roll over. I'm starting to think that this play has only one line. It's the only one that I see rehearsed. Now use the pain. You were so full of it, Jason, I'm done. I'm never talking to you again. But that's just it. We can't be done. I love you. And so, I'm gonna get on this spaceship. <laughs> Even better than the alien nativity play from Last Ounce of Courage. Given that this movie contains members of the Robertson family from Duck Dynasty, I think this may be the only screening process involved with the movie. Rachel gets the part in the play, and the shooters are still two-dimensional stereotypes. I hate this school. Yeah, me too. I'm starting to think this movie isn't interested in what made them tick. It's more interested in showing Rachel's birthday party. Well, this box isn't big enough for an Acura. Exactly. But it is big enough for the key. Oh. Crap, do we tell her we just got her the key? There's no car outside. Now she and Alex can have relationship talk. I just don't think you can always define things with words. You know, I feel like what we have is so much stronger than human constructs like language. 
God damn it, 90s, stop picking the most pretentious way to say I like you. I have several pickup lines that are far more pretentious. You could borrow some if you'd like. I'm surprised they didn't just cast Zachary Ty Bryan and then clone him and make him play all of the White Hats. And it's interesting to see a Pure Flix movie where the people who are trying to stop Rachel from hanging out with those with flaws are seen as the antagonists. Normally, these movies would be okay with demonizing her friends. But Nate is super jealous at Rachel's relationship with Alex. I don't know why you mess around with that guy. <laughs> you know, of all people, I didn't think you would judge him. I'm, I'm not judging, I'm just... I, Rachel, I think you're being stupid. I'm not sure this movie needs a love triangle. Save that for the teenage left behind movie. Or better yet, don't. Although we now see some more lines in the play. Gosh, Andy, don't be so impossible. I'm not! I'm full of possibilities. Isn't that what you always say? Why don't you give possibility a chance, right? <laughs> There's still a chance we can give this a possibility. Yeesh. <laughs> Someone bring in Max Fisher from Rushmore to punch this play up a bit. Nate is in the audience and is mad that she's kissing another guy in the play. I guess I spoke too soon when I said Clay Walsh wasn't in this, but the reviews for the play are in. Yeah, you were real good, you know. Some of those lines were a little weird, though. Hmm. Kinda like the reviews for I'm Not Ashamed. Lead actress Macy McLean is really good, though some of the lines are weird. Like this scene where the two dudes try to out jealous bro each other. So what'd you think? I liked everything about it, except you. I think Rachel can take care of herself. I don't know what she needs you for. Movie, you don't need characters that are more unlikable than the Columbine shooters. Now it's off to celebrate by playing which bottle has the ecstasy in it. Though Nate was quite right in the fact that Alex is not the kind of person you'd want to be alone in a basement with. I just can't do this. It's okay, just trust me. There's dog food in here. <clears throat> so, cat person? She goes away once she realizes he's the guy everyone wants to die in a slasher film. Seriously, two minutes later, he moves on to her friend Madison. I told you that this Jesus freak thing would be an issue. Wait, are you, are you like a serious Christian? Says the guy who read her diary out loud. Why are you surprised she's religious? She literally told you she was. And in case you forgot that this is a tragedy, That wasn't a clip, that was the entire scene, clearly suggesting that the events of Columbine wouldn't have happened if someone didn't give them after effects. Whatever you do, don't get too deep, 90s era movie. God's just some outdated cultural construct. How can you really believe in some being up in the sky that you can't even see? Hmm, before internet videos and comments, people used to say stuff like that in person. Throughout her breakup with Alex, and some of her friends abandoning her, Rachel is still shown as someone who puts the needs of her friends before her own, and this is all while she's also contemplating suicide. And yes, it still gets a little too on the nose. I am not going to apologize for speaking the name of Jesus. And I'm not going to hide the light that God has put in me. if I have to sacrifice everything. This is even followed by a shot where it looks like she's walking right into heaven, and there's still 40 minutes of the movie left. But once she bounces back emotionally, she doesn't let her friend's betrayal get to her, and she goes on living her life, or as the movie puts it. You're not gonna be a beer chugging, pot tripping, cigar puffing, drug dealing Christian? No, I'm a God loving, oh. Satan slamming, Jesus freaking world changer Christian, warrior for Christ. Can we leave the white Christian rapping to Carmen, thank you very much? Though I will take cheesy Christian movie rapping over this scene. It's gonna be like Oklahoma City, the LA riots in World War II, all mixed into one. Yeah, like a video game. 
I remember the first time I played Wolfenstein 3D. I was a little put off when it amplified my inner hatred and goaded me into violence and fear against an invisible enemy. Oh, wait. That was a Dinesh D'Souza movie. It gets even more unsubtle from there, as Rachel gives a speech about her Christianity while the shooters stare daggers at her like they're gonna kill her right then and there. And this is right before showing their Hit Men for Hire video, where they play people who are hired to gun down school bullies. Which to me makes the case that it's warning signs like this that should have been taken more seriously, as well as issues like bullying and mental health which, honestly, are issues that most sides can agree on. They even hassle her for not liking their video, and the way the dialogue is, it's like every line is her last line. Hey, look out for my friend Austin when I'm not around. Oh my god, movie. I know she's gonna die. Why can't I see my future? Stop! She does get invited to prom, though. It was his second time spelling this out with chiclets. The first time he accidentally spelled prog? It's definitely gonna be news to the real kid she went to prom with that he's Chinese. Alex kinda sorta tries apologizing in the most passive-aggressive way possible. Playing our song. We don't have a song. I know. I wish we would've, though. This one would have been a good one. You would have picked Was It Something I Didn't Say by 98 Degrees, and you know it. The real story, though, is that her friend is secretly Bridget Nielsen undercover as a high school student. Rachel's influence, however, has spread to the bullies, who are now seen as accepting people with disabilities and bullying other bullies. So, they're the Dexter of bullies? The movie is almost over, and there is still foreshadowing. When the bombs blow up, it's gonna be awesome. Boom! Hey, wait a minute. I think this movie's about the Columbine shooting. And that it is, which is equipped with Rachel being asked, Are you ready? As if everyone knows she's gonna die. There is a creepy shot of the killers walking up behind her on the lawn, and the rest plays out like you'd expect in a Pure Flix PG-13 Columbine movie. She's asked if she believes in God, she says yes, and they kill her. The rest is only shown through news footage, so nothing extremely graphic is shown. Before the movie ends, we're shown a funeral scene and everyone leaving flowers on the real Rachel's actual car. Yes, the movie does feel like it was made to advance their own Christian narrative, with the movie asking you to text about the film's message, much like the ending of God's Not Dead. It is a little tasteless to make this into a story of religious martyrdom, when that doesn't seem to be the case, especially since she was wounded before she was asked the question, and there's also accounts of victims at Columbine being killed for the color of their skin, as well as the color of their hats. The family has even been criticized for producing the film and using the story for profit, but they still lost their child, and these people all lost their friend. It's not hard to feel a bit of sadness for that, especially in a story that more often than not is about someone simply being a good person and helping to take care of their fellow man. The movie creates sympathy in people of all faiths and cultures, which is a lot more than I can say about movies like God's Not Dead, which demonizes anyone and everything that dares to have a different belief. The movie is way too overly sentimental at times, it goes completely overboard in the foreshadowing, and provides very little insight on the tragedy itself, and instead uses that for its own agenda. It's insensitive, exploitive, and a bit tasteless, but I've seen movies that feature testicular torture in Jonestown, and John Belushi playing pinball with his guardian angel. Not to mention, I've seen a Columbine RPG game! The movie's not good, it's certainly pandering, and I see why someone would be pissed off at its existence, but it's not as hateful as it could have been. 
And that's saying something. The Columbine Pure Flix movie is less hateful than the Romance Pure Flix movie. Though I'm sure that I'm no puppet Steve from any message board not only thinks that this is the worst movie ever made, but that he has the real scoop and insight into the Columbine tragedy. Hey, you son of a bitch. I'm no puppet Steve is me. Everyone knows that Columbine really happened because of toxic matter entering the students' brains due to the cheap plastic in the cafeteria chairs. What? Your name is Steve? On this day, 110 years ago, Adolf Hitler was born. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.